Guys, this video is sponsored by Simply Safe, but we'll talk about those guys later in the video. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Chase on two wheels here at Mountain Motorsports and the matching motorcycle to their logo in front of me is a 2022 Honda Fury. You guys can thank our new producer, Trey. We are trying to incorporate more of the motorcycle market and typically we don't do a lot of cruisers here but the year of the motorcycle 2022 we are changing that today so with that today i'm gonna ride this crazy looking cruiser this should be very interesting if you guys are excited make sure to hit that like hit that like button for motorcycle inclusivity you guys know there's only one thing to do, one thing to do, and that's ride this thing. You guys stick around to find out why this thing is so good. Honda hasn't changed it in over a decade. Let's get this first ride with key on the side started. guys that's what this glorious thing looks like that's what it sounds like now while i get my gloves on before we get going we do got to talk about a quick ad real fast uh and that way we can pay the bills and have this cool camera car footage for you guys so you guys sit through an ad real quick and we will get it going afterwards thanks simply safe for sponsoring this video for you guys that don't already know, Simply Safe is an easier way to secure your home and family. Simply Safe systems are customized to your home with a comprehensive lineup of sensors and cameras that all connect to their 24-7 monitoring service that sends help fast in an emergency. They've got all types of sensors that cover windows, rooms, doors, and lots of great extras like water sensors, smoke detectors, as well as cameras, both for outdoor, doorbell cams, and indoor cameras. You simply go on their website and go through all of the sensors and you just grab as many as you need to cover all the spots in your house. With all of their sensors, your home, garage, or shop is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, Simply Safe's always on team will call authorities immediately. They also just recently launched this new outdoor camera that I've really enjoyed using. Whether I'm in the backyard or at the shop, I can just pull up my phone and check in on the camera from anywhere. The install on this thing could not be easier. Just a couple of screws and the camera magnetically attaches to the mount and you're good to go. All you need to do is recharge the battery every now and then. My favorite part about Simply Safe is the way that you have no contracts. I've had really terrible experiences with other security companies locking me into contracts and then I have to pay them to cancel it when me and my wife move. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore with Simply Safe. Plus, trying Simply Safe is completely risk free. If you don't absolutely love your system, just return it within 60 days for a full refund. If you guys are in the market for a new home security system, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and you get your first month free. You're welcome. Just visit simplysafe.com slash chase to learn more. Also, thank you guys for checking them out because it really helps the channel out. And now back to the video. I thank you guys so much for sitting through that ad. I massively appreciate it. If it wasn't for you guys sitting through the ads, the ad people wouldn't keep coming back and we wouldn't be able to bring such crispy footage to you. Let's, let's not have my phone in my pocket. All right, fam, here we are. Oh Lord. 
Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Look how big the kickstand is. All right, 2022 Honda Fury. Legs super bent. Uh, really low seat height here, and leaning this bike back and forth. It is so heavy. Oh my goodness. Oh no. That's not supposed to be like that. All right, let's hold that and hope we can bend this. No, that's not gonna happen. Let's do this. Let's fix it the old fashioned way. Ugh, that's not gonna work either. There we go. That'll have to work. <laughs> that's hilarious whatever we're doing it actually that's gonna touch my hand and that's gonna freak me out i don't want to do that there we go yeah fix it okay hi guys um so super low seat height pretty cool we got forward controls is that forward or is that mid i don't know far out there handlebars way up here let's get this thing started before i get too too scared to not Oh my God, <laughs> that wheel is so far up front. Sorry guys, this is uh, this is new to me, so it's gonna take me a second. And guys, before we get on the mean streets, uh, I do want to let you guys know about our Discord channel. It's full of motorcycle enthusiasts, probably just like you, and it's totally free. Uh, link in the description if you guys wanna come join a cool motorcycle community over on Discord. You can even tell me what bikes I should ride. Let's see how many of you want me to ride a Fury. We'll wait for this black car and we'll go. All right, guys, we are off. <laughs> With the 2022 Honda Fury. Holy crap. So guys, uh, when I was going through uh, Mountain Motorsports the other day, I had Trey with me and uh, we were looking at the Fury and he was like, oh man, you need to ride that thing. And I was like, what, why, what's so special about it? It looks crazy. And he goes, this motorcycle has not been updated or changed for over a decade. That is 10 years Honda has been making this motorcycle. And apparently it is so good that there is nothing to change and they haven't changed it in over a decade. That's, those are insane numbers to me, but you guys know I'm new to the cruiser market, so like, I'm like, is the cruiser market like Suzuki? They just never change anything or what? So it got me intrigued. Why don't they change this motorcycle? Because clearly they're selling them if they, well, I hope, I, hypothetically they're selling them. There's gotta be a reason Honda hasn't changed this thing. So I'm, I'm super interested to hopefully find it out. What's up cruiser guy? who gave me a big old wave? Good for you, man. All right, guys, uh, it's a first ride. We got some stuff to talk about. So let's start out with body position. So we're on a cruiser here. It is going to be totally different from uh, what we are used to. My hands are almost, uh, they're slightly down, but very in front of me. Uh, my butt's kind of comfortable. My legs are out in front of me with a, a decent bend in my legs. You guys can see from the camera car. I've got to be honest, guys, this is a pretty comfortable position. I feel slightly leaned forward, slightly aggressive, and honestly, I'm really comfortable. Uh, I will note the seat is... A real medium level seat, it's not super soft, not super hard, but one thing I'm noticing is I do feel a decent amount of vibration in my wrists and especially in my feet. I don't ride a ton of cruisers. So actually let's talk about cruisers real quick for me so you guys can get a baseline of what my knowledge for these car, uh, these bikes are. I've ridden maybe three cruisers in my entire life. I've ridden uh, some victory something years and years ago. I've rode my buddies, um, I don't even, it was one, some cheap Chinese brand. And then I've ridden the Sportster S from Harley. That is literally the extent of the cruiser information or experience that I have. So if, if I touch on some weird things throughout this video, that's why. Uh, I, you know, typically on the Chase on Two Wheels channel, we focus a lot on nakeds. We focus a lot on adventure bikes, super motos, uh, super sports. But we're trying to bring in the entire motorcycle market, and which is why I'm here <laughs> on this awesome Fury. So guys, the next thing we got to talk about, like we always talk about our power modes. Uh, this bike has one and it's on. <laughs> uh, as you guys can see, the instrument cluster and the controls, we'll talk about the controls later on, but it's super minimal and there's no modes. Uh, the modes are that, that throttle for you. <laughs> That's all you have to, to change on the bike. 
So it gives you that kind of streamlined situation. As far as the bike maneuvering through kind of slow speed traffic, one of the things that's really uh, vibrant in my mind about this bike is how long it feels. The bike actually does feel a little long. Now granted, we've got that big front wheel and the bike is a is a just physically a long motorcycle and you can feel that as far as like going side to side i d i can honestly feel that front tire up ahead of me and what's really interesting is when i'm going over these small little bumps i almost feel them in two stages i can feel my front tire hit the bump and then i can afterwards feel my rear tire uh which is pretty interesting the bike is so long it just you know accounts for that it's it, it's got it's not necessarily a bad thing i would almost say the feeling of having the bike so long almost makes me feel more stable you know i and i'm squatted down I honestly don't hate the position if if I'm gonna be totally honest. You know guys, something I'm noticing as far as the power delivery here in slow speed traffic, the bike is uh, shaft driven and when I let off the power, I do get that sinking feeling. Uh, that happens on a lot of shaft driven motorcycles but the bike squats back down when I, I let off the power and it starts decelling. Uh, it's very apparent though, even at slow speeds. Typically this is something that you would really notice when you're getting on it and then you just massively drop the throttle. But even at these low speeds, I can feel the bike kind of perk up when I start going and then squat back down when I uh, let off accelerations. It's pretty interesting that it's that pronounced at such a slow speed. I'm a, I do know one thing, having such a low seat height in traffic makes it super simple to get my feet on the ground uh, i've got no problem you know we got kind of like shitty traffic right now and coming to a stop my feet just dropping from these forward handlebars down to the ground super comfortable uh you know on a motorcycle where your feet are kind of upright uh it's a little more difficult you know we got this right turn coming up guys and i will say as a rider of as a person that doesn't typically spend a lot of time on cruisers I am slightly worried about the ground clearance. Now, I don't think I'm going to have a problem up here on this right-hand turn. It is something just because I'm not used to it. I'm sure if a lot of you guys that ride cruisers, you're probably like, ah, nah, you're fine in city. But it is something that I have a hard time getting out of my head. So if you're watching this and you're thinking of getting a Fury as your first cruiser, just know you might have that kind of vibe of like, I wonder if I'll scrape. Now, if we end up scraping through this video, yeah, well, that's justified, but keep that in mind. I totally feel you if you have those that kind of mentality. You can go, you have a green light. <laughs> All right, so far so good. We didn't scrape there. <laughs> Whoa, man, that, <laughs> that shaft drive, boy, it will bring you to a stop. It was a little high in the revs when I went down there for a second and it, it yanked me forward. We'll talk about controls later in the video, but man, this clutch is so heavy. My fingers are exhausted right now. Hopefully we can get out of this traffic. My goodness. Ah, let's give it some. Oh yeah, all what? 57 horsepower, baby, and 70 something foot pounds of torque. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's hilarious. So guys, getting up to some speed here. I don't know, it's kind of a vibe. <laughs> that shaft drive has such a cool feeling. Uh, any bike that I've ridden that's shaft driven, I kind of dig how, you know, I dig the coming up and the squatting down. I love the feel of all that. And is this bike a little underpowered? Maybe. Like, I'm not super familiar with what a cruiser sh quote unquote should feel like, but I mean, I can get around traffic with no problem at all. <laughs> so, is it underpowered? I don't know. What's the definition of underpowered? I'm having a great time. Bro, this is such a vibe. I am here for it. Those brakes, though, my goodness. I will say, and maybe it's because I'm not using the rear brake enough there is something left to be desired in that front lever my goodness front brake lever all right guys coming up we have the highway entrance 
where we are supposed to do a 40 to 80 pull but if I'm gonna be honest I don't really feel a hundred percent safe getting this bike all the way down to 40 I would definitely try uh, but another thing I'm looking at on the highway is vibration I'm gonna look for my how much wind is on me because we've got a relatively open bike there's no real um, windscreen to help buffeting I'm kind of sitting only slightly forward so I don't know how the highway is going to do on this thing. It is a cruiser. I should cruise on the highway. You know, I'm in a different body position, so I don't even know what to expect. Yeah, guys, well, there's. it looks like a decent amount of traffic on the highway. If we're not able to do the 40 to 80 pull, I do apologize, but uh, safety at the end of the day is more important than, uh, than a 40 to 80 pull. All right, I'm going to try to slow down some right here. That's not first gear, but the 45. And uh, that's 80. So I wasn't in first gear, guys. Sorry about that. I had cars coming up behind me, so I had to boogie a little bit. Is the 57 horsepower really going to get you going quickly? Not really. I do feel like the bike sounds good, but it doesn't get me really excited when it gets to throttling. Now, we're here on the highway. We're going 80 miles an hour. A lot of wind buffeting. Uh, my body's kind of shaking all around, but... The good news is the bike's not going anywhere. I imagine having that long, uh, what is it, rake and trail of this bike, it helps out with keeping the bike really stable at speed. As far as wind protection, I'm getting a lot of wind here on my arm and in the front of my leg. Again, I'm not really sure how normal that is with a cruiser because my legs are more up front here. You know, just letting you guys know what I feel. We are in, what is it, the fifth gear? I think it's a five speed. I can totally chill, not behind that dump truck. I can totally chill here on the highway. Bike doesn't seem like it's hurting for uh, power right now. Is it cruisable on the highway? Yeah, totally, no problem at all. I just think the only issue for the highway for you guys is probably gonna be the getting up to speed. But once you're at speed, no problem at all. So we're gonna slow on down. We're gonna get over in that right lane so we can prepare for the big old turn. Yeah, there is a lot of wind on my head right now. I like to remind you guys, for whatever reason, this highway is windy as hell all the time. But just keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure they make a model of this with a windscreen. So if you are doing a lot of highway, that is definitely something I would look into. So not a terrible showing for the uh, highway section of the Fury. Now my favorite big turn. Now I know cruisers aren't made for turns, but we got to test it. That's what we're here for. That's why they pay us the medium bucks. Hopefully I don't come in tight. My goodness, that shaft driven uh, down. Oh, that's peg. Shit. Okay, we, we hit a peg. That was violent. My God. All right, we're going to slow on down. I was slightly worried we were going to hit pegs here, but all right, now we know. So ground clearance is definitely something you're going to have to look out for. All right, guys, uh, while I collect myself from my shaken peg drop, uh, let's jump over to uh, the Cardo camera spot and see what the guys in the camera car think of the old Fury. All right, so uh, Honda Fury 1300 has uh, pretty much been the same exact machine since its inception of 2009. Uh, it has been unchanged, unmolested, except for maybe paint colors. Um, I find this bike to be a little strange in the way that it's probably about like, you know, a 7 8 scale chopper. It's not quite a full-size chopper, what you'd expect. You know, a factory-built chopper-esque machine. Um, but it is a fantastic ride. Super smooth. The bike is very capable. It does everything you ask it to fairly well. Doesn't make a ton of power, but enough to have some fun. Um, not a huge fan of the yellow that they have on it. And uh, definitely not a fan of the gray frame. I think they really should have went with a black frame on that thing. But So 2022 Honda Fury in Big Bird Yellow. It's a bit dramatic with the paint, but like Brian was saying, it looks uh, looks pretty good. Uh, Honda's ironed out all the wrinkles, so I'd like to give this thing a ride. Uh, 
Just a long, a long straight highway though. Like a midnight ride, just just cruising across the desert is what this this bike is giving me vibes of. So. Yeah, I mean, it's fair to just gobble up miles. Yeah. So yeah, super cool bike. Uh, it had this weird effect on Chase where he says brother like Hulk Hogan a lot. So. What are you talking about, Billy? <laughs> there it is. So expect that if you buy one of these. All right, guys in the camera car, thank you so much for your opinions. And guys, if you want to get a discount on a Cardo unit, there will be a link in the description. They are the uh, headset we use here at the shop to communicate, and we love them. Thank you, Cardo, for sponsoring the first ride spot, and thank you for giving the crew a discount on a purchase. So, guys, I know I hit the peg, and, that you know, we're going to cut back into the video where I was like, well, if I hit a peg, we'll find out. But... I think one of my issues is that I come from motorcycles with far more ground clearance, so I don't really have that good part of my head that tells me like, hey, you're leaning over too much type thing. But let's talk about power delivery. I feel like the bike has a good power delivery, it's consistent, I like the way it feels, but if I were to choose, I would, I would have a little more power. Uh, not necessarily on the highway. I felt kind of fine being on the highway just kind of chilling. But when I'm in like city streets and I get an opportunity to really gun it, I, I would like to be thrown back in my seat more. They've got this kind of like curved seat. I feel like it's holding my butt well. And, I, you know, I would just want to be thrown back. I want to hold on for dear life. And I'm not really getting that with this bike. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily torque or horsepower. It might be a little bit of horsepower and a little more torque. But that's power delivery. Transmission-wise, uh, has felt great. Every time I've shifted, I like the position of the shifter. And every time I shift, I get a really good, satisfying feel. You know, whether it's up or down, I can feel that gear click in. It gives me a lot of confidence as the rider knowing that, you know, that transmission is solid like that. You know, guys, another thing to hit on is the uh, steering. You are going to be steering in a methodically, in a slow way. Uh, it's a cruiser, you know, you're not going to expect to just fall in. But everything you do on this bike, you need to do ahead of time. It's not going to quickly change position. And I touched on the brakes earlier. You know, again, I don't know if I'm just like off base with the cruisers, but I wish it could stop a little harder. It definitely helps giving it an equal amount of rear brake in that front brake. The front brake alone, <laughs> bake. the front brake alone, it's really, I, I'm not here for you just using that. But when I use the rear and the front at the same time, it does feel like it's a bit, a good bit stronger. If you guys are grabbing this bike, just make sure to use the front and the rear brake at the same time. On the bikes I kind of come from, front brake's normally fine, but, you know, I'm learning. This is part of my learning phase, you know, and everybody's got to go through one. All right, guys, so uh, let's talk about all this going on. Uh, as far as the controls go, super minimal. You know, we do not have a lot of controls here. Uh, they do look like a, a little lower quality as far as buttons, kind of like a cheap plastic. I can say, all clicking through the, the controls, they do have a good feel. You know, they might look cheap and they might not have like a premium feel, but at least I'm getting that tactile click, kind of similar to the transmission. I know when I've clicked into something, and just because it's got minimal controls doesn't mean it's bad. I would much rather have minimal controls and have them uh, be very tactile. I can't stand the uh, mushy buttons. Next up, let's talk about the grips. Uh, these grips are huge, at least from where I'm from. <laughs> the, you know, the super sport, the naked market. These are huge grips and I kind of feel, it feels a little weird holding them. And again, that's probably because I'm used to something else, but they are pretty big. I can just barely touch my fingers on the other side. Uh, as far as the levers go, they do, I can't tell if that one's adjustable. It is not. So we've only got an adjustable clutch lever, which is nice. I'd rather have one than none. But I will say the clutch is very heavy. My fingers back when, uh, before we got on the highway, we were already starting to get a little tired. I'm not sure if that's something we can adjust, but super heavy clutch. Uh, final thing I want to touch on is the dash. It's a little hard to see some of the lights here, like the blinkers. We'll just put that on. When the light hits it a certain way, it's a little hard to see what's going on here. 
I wish those were a little brighter. I uh, don't really have a problem with the uh, tack though. I kind of wish I had an RPM situation going on so I knew how much I was revving it, but I think that's pretty common for a cruiser not to have a, an RPM gauge. I, I, I can see how fast I'm going, so I, I do appreciate that. I feel like this fits with the vibe of the whole motorcycle, so I'm, I'm here for that. I don't have to have a ton of information, and it looks like the information I don't have here, I get down here. I'll give you guys a close-up of the dash real quick and get stopped. That's the dash odometer looks like an abs light maybe and then some uh alternative stuff down there like brights turns neutral stuff like that all right guys so we're gonna take a ride over here in our little church parking lot that we always get off the bike and take a look at i know you guys have been looking at the bike from the camera car perspective but i do a little walk around of the motorcycle so let's go see if we can get my parking spot what number is it 144 all right guys let's uh Let's get this thing. It can barely fit in a parking spot. I don't even know if it can. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, you hear that satisfying click? Listen, this 42 foot kickstand and the key on the side, so weird to me. 2022 Honda Fury. This bike gives me major, uh, what's it called? West Coast chopper vibes. You guys know what I'm talking about? The old show where uh, they would like build choppers and stuff. That is the vibe I get from this motorcycle, which makes it weird that all of these uh, pieces, all the yellow has nothing on it. It's almost like they give you a blank canvas to <laughs> get uh, like decals put on or something like that. Look how wide this thing is, guys. It cannot fit perfectly well it kind of does fit perfectly in this one parking spot now visually i'm not here for this <laughs> this is not my vibe my first motorcycle was this color yellow so i do appreciate it for that shout out to my old 2005 suzuki sv650 days this is that long bike that i was telling you guys about look how far the front wheel is. look how big the front wheel is very specific vibe if this is what you're looking for i do love the fact that it has abs in the front and rear so like if you get in trouble hopefully it will help you out look how low the seat is too super crazy so you guys have to let me know in the comments if this is more of uh, of your vibe of motorcycle or not but whether it is or not doesn't change the fact that if you guys are on instagram you should follow us at c to dub pics i'm gonna take a photo real quick boy this thing stands all the way out oh my goodness look at that <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so cool. All right, guys, uh, if you guys want to see that photo I took, uh, follow us over on c 2 Picks. We post a lot of photos of bikes we do first rides on and a lot of little behind-the-scenes stuff of what the guys and I in the shop are getting into. Let's finish this thing up. Oh, yeah, we're also on TikTok where we make random-ass videos because we don't know what to do. ABS light. Oil light. Those aren't actually on. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. So, rounding out this video, let's talk about... Do I think this motorcycle, the Honda Fury, is a pass or is it a buy? I know a lot of you guys are going to assume I'm going to say pass, and I am, but I want to be clear. I don't hate this motorcycle at all. I actually really like the vibe. I like the way I feel on it. I like the way I fit on it. I would even be okay with the engine. The only things that make me pass this motorcycle are how big the grips are how heavy the front uh, the clutch is and the looks if the bike looked a little different if i you know looked like something i enjoyed i could totally see myself riding one of these things i feel like this is a cool feeling motorcycle i feel cool while i'm riding it and to be honest while i've been on it i haven't been looking at it and i've enjoyed myself so I'm not passing it for the reasons you guys probably think I am. Now, as far as who do I think this bike is for, obviously you gotta pass the check mark that is, you gotta like the way the bike looks. If you're into that kind of West Coast choppery vibe, and maybe you're kind of new to riding, I think this engine size isn't really that bad to handle. Uh, you could probably get yourself in trouble with maybe, you know, higher speed or the brakes or something like that coming in too hot to stuff. But it's been a really pleasurable bike to ride around. And if I like the way it looks and a few other tweaks, I could honestly ride one of these things around and be totally content. So I bet you guys didn't expect that out of me. Uh, so shout out to Trey for making me to ride a Honda Fury. Wouldn't have thought about that. Yeah. Uh, 
we going? Uh, but guys, before we get to the end of this video, I do got to give a shout out to the dealership that let us borrow it. That is Mountain Motorsports in North Georgia. If you guys are looking for a new motorcycle or a used motorcycle up here in North Georgia, I highly recommend Mountain. Been going to them for probably seven or eight years now. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't get to loan all of these motorcycles to do first rides for you guys. We will have links in the description to check them out. And if you go into Mountain and tell them you came from a c 2 video, you can get a discount on your motorcycle. So you're welcome. Uh, they also have a huge inventory. So if you guys are looking for a Fury or literally any other type of motorcycle, you can s at least sit on God knows about anything. But anyways, guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. I appreciate you guys riding around with me, and I'll see you on the next one. Outro crew, thanks again to the end of the video. Make sure to put an OC in your comment down below. We love you guys a little bit longer. You guys let me know how many years before you guys think I'm going to be on a cruiser. <laughs> oh, man. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.